Hi guys, I'm Harry Guest. I'm a geologist here for Album Mineral Resources and over the past year I've been working on the 3D model for the Clog Ice and David's Gold Mine um, as well as a couple of our other projects. Um, so today I'm just going to give you a walkthrough of what developments we made with the 3D model um, and sort of, sort of talk you through what the results we've had over the past year. Over the past few years um, Alba have undertaken um, a couple of laser scan surveys of the mine. So these have given us a really good uh, picture of um, the 3D space that we can get access to. Um, you'll see them in here in white, um, starting with the, the Lechfaith adit and the drainage adit here, um, one of the key areas of focus for us. Going all the way along the Lechfaith adit with the, uh, the grandfathers split, where the load splits into two, and there's two branches that have been mined here. Um, further along, we see the 710 stopes, um, at the end of the Lechfraith uh, adit, and then we actually see a, cost, a cross cut across to the, um, the Jack Williams load, uh, where shaft one exists down here, and also the uh, service ladderway starts from down here. We also have a slightly older laser scan uh, that Alba undertook uh, before this uh, recent phase, uh, which scans the uh, accessible workings on the Tinney Cornell level. So up here we have the, the Jack Williams Stopes, the uh, Tinny Cornell added entrance up here. And we have uh, the Cornell South Exploration Drive all, all the way along towards the main load workings. Um, <clears throat> and what these uh, laser scans have allowed us to do is to accurately position these workings for the first time in 3D space. Um, prior to that, um, a lot of our sur what survey plans we're working with um, some of the angles and distances don't quite work out. So we're using these um, laser scans, we've actually been able to add a whole host of 3D detail um, to our knowledge about the mine. So if I just knock those on for you now, you can see immediately um, that's helped us to, to build the first, you know, 3D, uh, the first uh, semi-accurate 3D model of, um, of the clog eye workings, which is really exciting. So uh, starting down in the flooded section at Lexfraith, um, we have you know, uh, developed a model here of what we can expect to see when we get down there um, after dewatering. Further along, we can see the, uh, the upper stopes in the 710 area, which we've modeled in, as well as an exploratory shaft down here. Um, we've also got in our service rays, the ladderway, um, the shaft one workings, as well as um, the recently significant uh, Cornell 2, which is a, a, a sub-level above the Tinney Cornell level. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about that later. And um, most excitingly recently, we've actually been able to, um, to take the old section plans and, and floor plans um, of the mine, uh, a couple of iterations, you know, there's several different uh, published uh, authors have had uh, different versions. And what we've been able to do now is model that in 3D space, um, thanks to the work that we've, we've done with these laser scans. So now you can see the true scale of the mining that's taken place at Clog Eye, which I think is really interesting. If you think that uh, in, the, uh, in the western end of the mine, which is where Albra are focusing mainly, um, there hasn't been nearly as much work done as in the main load section here to where you have stopes that are, you know, over 100 metres high um, from the tinny corn level to, to surface where they're open. So the scale of workings here just goes to show how little work has been done to the west. And that shows the sort of opportunities that Alba has to explore in that area, which is really great. We can also see the St David's workings as well in 3D for the first time. Having these in 3D um, really helps us sort of pick out um, structural features so you can see there's a sort of, uh, previous authors have suggested that this area of heavily stoped out ground here is um, a low plunging pay chute through the load. So we can actually model that in, in 3D for the first time now um, and sort of predict where it might go into this area. And that's really interesting for us as well. So it's allowing us to make a couple of, you know, really exciting um, sort of developments there. Not only have we done laser scanning, of course, we've also um, undertaken uh, four, four drill, diamond drilling programs now over the past two years, uh, as well as uh, a short program back in uh, 2019. 
So um, that started uh, in the September of 2020 with a series of underground drill holes, which I've just popped on for you now. You might remember from RNS's back around Christmas 2020 that actually we intercepted some grade in this structure here. Um, I think there was a sample of just over one gram per ton in that one. Um, and it was quite interesting for us as obviously it's between or potentially below some greenstone sills, which encourage, is encouraging to us as that's one of the historical controls and grade that has been identified by previous workers. Um, we inferred from that that this structure was also hit in this hole here in L003. Um, and we believe that that structure continued a long strike and linked up with the Jack Williams load. So immediately following on from that, we started with surface drilling. So <clears throat> again, you might remember um, throughout the start of uh, 2021, we were drilling um, a series of 10 holes from near the Lexfraith yard, um, out underneath the Lexfraith pay chute. And we intercepted that um, both along strike and at depth uh, of existing workings. We actually proved the existence of that, of that load around about 120 meters below known workings. So that was really exciting for us and that, that shows that that, um, that, vein, uh, that vein system is actually continuous at depth. So again, you can see that in terms of pure size comparisons, this area is a lot more worked out than this small section here. So there still remains a lot to be done um, in terms of mining in that area. So the results of the, the phase one surface drilling, um, as you can see here, we've been able to model uh, what we know as the, the lower load, so this red structure here, and the upper load. So the upper load is a series of uh, sort of narrower structures um, that are quite close to the lower load, which is interesting because previously um, workers hadn't identified that there were two major, load system, there are two major loads within this Lechfraith pay chute system. Um, we also defined the, what, we, what we termed the canal vein system, um, which is a series of small um, or relatively small stringer veins um, <clears throat> just below uh, the base of uh, sill 3 or the Lechfraith sill. Um, we actually found in one of these samples, I think it was a, a grade of over 4 grams per tonne. So that proved to us that this uh, vein system here has the potential um, to, to host mineralization. So last year, last year in the summer, we took a, a double pronged approach to following up on those drilling results. So we did um, a phase two underground program, four holes, uh, and we also followed up with um, a surface program again of, uh, of 10 holes. Now, uh, these were both targeting um, the Jack Williams extension structure. So both of these phases of drilling were designed predominantly to test for um, the extension of the main load system. So we see here um, where the load splits from the, the main load here into the Jack Williams and the 710. So we were targeting um, the, the Jack Williams branch of that, of that main load system. Um, what the drilling discovered actually uh, was that there was not one but two branches in that area. Um, so yeah, so what our drilling was then designed to do was to, um, to, to hit that between our known intercepts from the 2020 underground drilling and uh, have a bit of infill closer to where the, uh, the target load was worked. So one of the great things about the phase two surface program was we pushed the holes out underneath the Lechfraith at it. What that allowed us to do was actually prove that the 710 and grandfather's uh, structures continued <coughs> uh, below, below existing workings. Um, again, it has to be said that not a lot has been done on these structures below Lechfraith or even above Lechfraith level. So proving that they continue below is really exciting for us as well. Uh, historical workers believe that this uh, 32 meter um, trial drive was dri uh, driven on the 710 load. Um, when we sort of plotted that up in 3D, um, we realized that actually the 710 load could not possibly um, link up with that level. Um, the, the strike and dip was just not, just not right. So that leads us to believe that actually this level here was driven on a quartz vein that is not the 710 and is not the Jack Williams. So we projected um, our intercepts from phase two and it matched up perfectly with this Cornell 2 sub-level. 
And that now leads us to believe that actually there is a, another load in between the 710 and Jack Williams loads. And we've deemed that the, uh, the new branch load. So with this Western extension of the main load system and the downward continuation of the Leckfraith pay chute, Alba has significant near mine targets that haven't been exploited at a scale anywhere near the same as the main load workings that we've now modelled. The ground to the west of the Cornell Adit represents a key focus for the company going forward, and throughout 2022, Alba will be aiming to continue the progress made in exploring this region.